Howdy, Connection Group leaders. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is a little bit of confession time for you. I'm down in Houston with my family. I'm actually in a hotel room right now. Uh, we took a couple of days to come down here and go to the beach, have a little bit of fun before summer just totally takes off. And Dad, uh, you know, just does all the things that youth pastors do for the summer. And you know what I forgot? My Bible. So praise God for the Gideons. I've got my Gideon Bible. We're going to use that to dive into verses tonight. Um, let's jump in. I'm excited about Corinth uh, Corinthians. I'm sorry. I'm excited about Galatians. Um, this is going to be a fun book to study. And I'm glad we're getting to spend several weeks on it. I love how Paul Paul starts off basically all of his letters in the same way. Just, hey, it's Paul. I love you. Grace and peace to you. Almost always calls the people saints. It's just very kind and gracious. And he does that in Galatians too. Uh, also here. Um, but he, <laughs> five verses in, he's like, okay, now that I've, said all the nice things, we got to talk because y'all are driving me crazy. He's a little bit feisty and fiery here, but but he's doing it for good reason, right? Because we're talking about the gospel and how it is so, so important that we get the gospel right, not only for our own selves, uh, but for those that we're ministering to. Uh, and, and not only unbelievers, but really how we minister to one another. And there's one really big issue. Well, two things that I think are worth bringing up. Number one, I think it's verse, let's see, verse five. No, I'm sorry, verse four. I just love this verse because it's encouraging. I think this is worth pointing out. He says, he who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our Father, our God and Father. Deliver us from this evil age. Man, you read that and you're like, yes, Jesus, do that. Please get us out of here. That's why Jesus came to save us, to get us out, right? Amen, and that's true. But that according to the will of God clause is really, really important here. It's easy for your brain to go, well, of course it's the will of God to get us out of here, and it is. But I also think that the deliver us from this evil age thing according to the will of God is important in that we need to understand the way God delivers us from all of the crazy that we're presently enduring and are going to continue to endure may not look the way that we think it should. Like we want God to just fix all the crud and and, and he might and he can and it's possible and he might also not. He may um, be using this to refine our faithfulness. And so like pray that prayer. Like Lord, we, we do want to be delivered from this evil age, but Jesus, we want we want your will be done. And so show us exactly how it is that you want us to follow you. So I do, I do. Take some encouragement from that first. But here's the deal. He jumps straight into the gospel and he says, I like I'm I'm going crazy because you guys have stopped following the gospel that I personally taught you. And Paul kind of says, I did it really, really well, and I did it the exact way that Jesus taught me the gospel, right? Already you've started to buy into this other form of the gospel where you believe it's Jesus plus other things, and that's what gets you saved. And the reason why you believe it's Jesus plus other things is because somebody else told you you ought to believe that. And so in verses 8 and 9, just deadly serious, he says, man, condemned is the person that uh, pollutes the gospel in that way. And he says it twice. Like, this is deadly, deadly serious. So we got to understand that. Well, here's the thing. In our context, praise God, I, to my knowledge, nobody at Lake Church preaches a gospel that says Jesus plus these things is, is what gets you into heaven. Uh, when we present the gospel, whether it's you know the ABCs or the Romans Road or whatever, we make it abundantly clear that it's by faith you are saved through grace, not of your works, so that nobody can boast this is the work of God. But here's what does happen, and it's a total ploy from the enemy that I think is so worth us being careful for and to think about and maybe even talk about in your groups this Sunday and to pray to God to protect our minds from these things. What we do when I know that I have to battle against my own heart is this. It's, I know that, that like it's by grace that you're saved through faith, um, but it also really, really drives me crazy when people believe differently than I do or people act differently than I do. And it really, really makes me question their salvation. And there's a problem with questioning other people's salvation. And it's not that questioning some salvation's unbiblical, although it's more my role to question my own salvation as for anybody else's, right? That's what Timothy actually tells us, like with fear and trembling, approach your own salvation, not everybody else's. But when I start to think about other people in that light of... I don't even know if they're really saved or not. All of a sudden, we are adding layers to the gospel because 
It's not that I don't think that they believe it's by grace or faith or saved, or saved through grace, through faith. I know they believe that, but they don't do all these other things. And since they do all these other things, maybe that's not real. You see how that's adding layers to the gospel? And here's, here's the stupid part. It's the enemy that plants those thoughts in our heads. He's the one that loves to point out other people's sins to us so that we'll condemn them alongside of him, which is just so discouraging. And again, is TJ being wishy-washy here with the gospel? No. Do standards matter? Absolutely. Are we supposed to pursue holiness? Absolutely. Does what we believe matter? Yes. Are we supposed to hold tightly to the scriptures? Yes. Absolutely. That, by the way, is why Galatians 2.20 is so important. That's my favorite verse in the entire Bible. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives within me. In other words, now that I belong to Jesus, yes, he is the boss of my life. He gets to tell me what to do. He gets to tell me how to think. He gets to tell me how I live. He's doing that because he saved me. He didn't save me because I was going to do those things. That's how we've got to keep the gospel pure. We're calling people to holiness with the understanding, like, the Lord's already done this salvific work in your heart. And now we want your sanctification to keep arriving. And we want to make it abundantly clear that it's not these things that save you. These are the results of our salvation. We're calling people to holiness, not because that's what saves them. We're calling people to holiness because we know that sin destroys. And it'll destroy our church, and it will destroy families, and it will destroy lives. I hope, I know I'm rambling, and I hope that's so, so clear. That might be a tiny distinction, but I think that's worth fleshing out and praying about and kicking around some this weekend. So I'm going to keep doing that while I'm sitting on the beach, but I will absolutely see y'all on Sunday, and I can't wait to do that. Uh, hey, by the way, y'all pray for Genesis and Cody. They're the ones preaching Sunday morning. Love you guys. We'll see you later. Bye.